Hi guys, it's Rebecca here from The Ship Shape Shop. Hope you're having a fab day. I think uh, some people are going to be heading back to school this week, uh, even if school looks like it's going to be from home for the next little while. Um, and what usually happens at the end of school holidays is parents start thinking, we, we better get the bedroom organised. Um, now, it's probably not going to be the typical strict uh, usual school day for your kids. So even though I'm squeaking in with this on the last day of the school holidays, as they would normally be, um, hopefully you can find some tips in here to help you get organised and to help your kids get organised over the next little while that they're at home. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, if you've seen on my stories lately, uh, one of Otis's favourite things to do is make a crash. So he comes in and announces, there has been a crash. And I've picked up about one million crashes over the last three weeks and I'm sick of, hi Donna, how are ya? Um, I'm good, thank you, hope you're doing well too. Uh, I'm sick to death of picking up crashes. So if you have similar scenes in your home and um, you're wanting to tidy up the kids' bedroom, I'm gonna share with you some of my tips and also tell you where you can go for further tips. Um, so I've got my laptop over here, so I'm gonna keep glancing because there's a lot to go through. Um, but I'm not gonna read all of it because there's a whole blog post written up. So this all came about last week. Um, a friend of mine, Rachel, runs a really cool business, Marshmallow and Mint, and they have so many activities activities for your kids to do to keep them out of mischief and out of your hair if you're uh, a little bit um, oversaturated on the kid contact at the moment uh, and I said to her that I would be happy to share my um, kids bedroom bingo blitz uh, which is a fun way to get kids to tidy up their bedroom so I've put that up on the blog post I'll share that in the comments um, but I was reading through this blog post that I wrote in October 2019 so October last year do you ever do this? Sometimes you read something that you wrote a while ago and you're like, damn girl, that was good. That's a really, really good blog post and there's some really useful stuff, if I may say so myself. Um, so I thought this would be the perfect thing to share with you guys this week. So here we go. Um, so there is an entire blog post, which I'll post a link to in the comments after I finish this. Um, but the very first thing, so there are, there's a, before you start organizing, so you wanna set the scene um, for success if you're organizing your kids' bedrooms. And the very, very first thing you need to do is lower your expectations. So if you expect that um, your kids' bedrooms are going to be Pinterest perfect all the time, then you need to take it down a notch because that's not reality. That is reality if you want to be in there constantly either nagging or doing the tidying yourself. So lower your expectations about what they can achieve and then you'll find that you have instantly much more success. So that's the first step. Lower your expectations. The second step is to have boxes or bags outside the door. So not in the bedroom, outside the door of the bedroom. And what you're teaching them by setting up the bags outside the bedroom is that the stuff is going out of the bedroom. So once it goes out of the bedroom, it's, it's not coming back in. It's not going to be put away. It's not going to be played with. It's either going to be rehomed to where it belongs in the house, mum's jewellery, mum's shoes, <laughs> a few other bits and pieces have been found with my clients um, over the years but you're rehoming them, you're putting them back where they belong rather than absorbing them into, into your child's bedroom. Um, and once they're out, once you've got bags, boxes set up outside the door, you're gonna label them. So you're going to label them donate, rubbish, store, and unsure. So by labeling the boxes, and obviously if your kids are really small, then you're gonna to need to be a lot more hands-on with this. Uh, but if your kids are say eight, nine, 10 and older, they'll be able to read those probably. Um, and be able to work quite independently. But I'm gonna come back to working independently. So once you've got your boxes or your bags labeled with donate, rubbish, store, and unsure, you just need to explain to them what each of those boxes mean. So obviously we as adults know that donate means that you are going to give that thing away, but you might need to make that very, very clear to your kids. Uh, rubbish is obviously rubbish, it's going in the bin. Store is something that you want to keep, but not in this bedroom, not in this room. So it might be um, a toy that you've outgrown, but might be perfect for a younger cousin or a, a younger friend, someone that you know. Um, and then unsure is anything. The unsure box is actually the coolest of them all because it's anything that your kid stumbles on. So if they're, if you find them like hovering over something and, and kind of paralyzed by the decision, teach them really quickly, put it in the unsure box because I can tell you once they're paralyzed by indecision about the thing that they're holding and they don't know what to do with it, 
it's only a matter of time before they're going to start playing with it and then you've lost them. So just teach them really quickly, put things in the unsure box. Anything you don't know about, put it in the unsure box. So that's your boxes all set up outside the door of the bedroom and get ready to get ready for action. So the next step is to give them permission to let things go. So quite often with the children that I've worked with in the past, they'll get to something, um, oh, it might be something that they've made and um, they're like, oh, I can't throw this away. Mum really likes this one. And then at the end of the session, I go and say to the mum, well, do you want to keep this? And they're like, oh, no. So quite often our kids don't realise that we don't have the same attachment to things that they think. Like when we've been going overboard and giving praise for something that they've made, they mistake that that, that is something that cannot be released at all. So by giving them explicit permission to let go of anything that they don't want, you'll find that your kids might just surprise you with how much they can actually let go of. Um, and give them some boundaries around what exactly they can. So for example, if you've got um, some Sylvanian families that you had as a child and then you've kept them all these years and then you've passed them down for your own child to play with, you're probably not going to want to put those in the donate box. You might want to do something else with them. So be very, very clear that anything that is out of bounds or that you're not sure of, put it in the unsure box or put it in the store box. Um, and then just let them go for it. So once you've given them the guidelines and the boundaries to work within, you'll be amazed at how quickly they can do stuff and how willing they are to let things go. Um, the next thing to do is set a time limit and, be, and explain the time limit. So say, right, we're going to do this for three hours. And when you're working with kids, definitely no longer than three hours. Three hours they will be tapping out. Expect them to be ready to tap out after one and a half or two hours. And that's the time when you say, right, we'll have a little break have some morning tea, always do it in the morning if you can, everyone feels a lot more fresh in the morning and they're more willing to, um, I guess probably less cranky is probably a better way to summarise it, they're more willing to do stuff, they're just less cranky in the morning, so give it a bash in the morning, three hours max, be prepared to come in with some snacks and a little break um, after around about an hour and a half, and then at the end of the three hours, um, <clears throat> stop. To say right that's enough for today let's just put everything else push it to one side and we'll have another stab later in the week um the final two things in um the setup phase the first one is to stay in the room so i know this is going to be a little bit harder if you're trying to work or if you are at that saturation point with kid contact that i mentioned earlier um but what in my experience what will happen if you leave them working independently in the room is that they're not going to get anywhere and that's because they don't have the tools they don't they don't have the discipline to stay at the task um and they got as they discover old toys they're going to start playing with them especially if they're on the younger side so you really need to be in the room with them and teach them everything you know and from my experience with with the children that i've worked with it's, it's actually really lovely bonding time. It's fun, you get to have a chat. It's a really wonderful opportunity for connection and having a laugh and a giggle and um, potentially some really great and important conversations as well. Um, and the last one, this one's a little bit harder and I'm sorry, if you don't have them already in your home, then you are not going to be able to do this step, um, but it's something to remember for the future. It's provide containers. So have a range of different containers available from big ones, um, big buckets, down to small ones. So kids, um, especially the little ones, have lots of fiddly little things. So you want to be able to provide them with containers so they can put those things away. Um, and that's the start of creating categories. And that's really it for the first half of it. So that is the setup phase. Also on the blog post, which I'm gonna share in the link below, um, there is, I have some tips around doing the work, teaching them about categories, giving their toys a home, name the toys in boxes, dealing with small things that I just mentioned, and then finally the finishing touches to put on, labelling, removing unwanted um, stuff and making a huge fuss. So I'm not going to keep blathering on for the rest of, and read out that whole blog post when it is really written up nice and easy for you guys to digest. Um, so I'm just going to share that in the comments. I've had way too much coffee today. I'm like feeling all that little, 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 juttery and stuttery through all my words. I hope you guys find that blog post really useful. Hit me up below if you've got any questions about organising your kids' room. Don't forget, this is still something that I can actually do remotely. Um, so if you would like any help, then just sing out and we can figure out a way through that, even if I am... <laughs> even if I've just seen your comment, next time you reorganise your wardrobe, can you please reorganise that cardi my way? 
I'd love to. It's actually just been reorganized out of my sister's um, wardrobe just before lockdown. She didn't want it anymore. And I was like, mm, yes, please. Um, thank you, Emma. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so yeah, I'll send, I'll share the link in the comments below for the full blog post and you can go and read it. And it is much more succinct than me blabbing on um, after having way too many coffees today and being a little bit woo jangly. So that's it. Um, if you've got any questions about organising kids' bedrooms, then please hit me up. I would love to help you out in any way I can. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.